Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine reporting to you from the Kerniak Center. We've just had UC Cooperative Extension holding their grape day. It's been a great experience. I'm here with George Schwang, the Viticulture Farm Advisor for Fresno County. It's been an interesting year. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk with you about what we, what growers have seen this year. I mean, we've had an incredible amount of water and rain and snow melt okay. early this season. And uh, it started kind of with cooler early su- summer temperatures. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, the heat sure came back with a vengeance, though. Can you tell us about what growers are seeing in the vineyard? Powdery mildew has been a problem. We're just, it seems like we're having to relearn some things because we're not used to having as much water, right, to deal with and everything that comes with it. I know, I know. Yeah, Matt, this is, a, you know, one year make a big difference, right? You know, yeah. I think I remember last year we were talking about droughts, you know, a lot of growers report like uh, whales were dry. And this year we have plenty of water, right? There's there's good or bad, right? Good things we have a lot of water, but there's some uh, you know uh, unfortunate consequence. We have right. a lot of water this year. One of the issue you know talk with a lot of growers this year is a uh, very like uh, you know very severe uh, mildew seasons for a lot of growers this year. Uh, part of the reason because of water, uh, a lot of rains in the winter time. I think we had a record, almost double the amount of uh, you know precipitation we got this year compared to the historic average. So that's good part, but the unfortunate part about that, and we have a lot of water, you know, typically that's gonna push a lot of uh, uh, early vigor of the canopy to basically grow a bigger canopy, right? Uh, it's not necessarily the bad things, but uh, you know, we, every time you have a bigger canopy, there's a potential risk of, uh, of disease, right? Because a bigger right. canopy is very hard to get a, a good fungicide or pesticide coverage on the clusters, and then you're gonna increase your humidities inside of the canopies. So all those you know, risks are gonna increase with a bigger canopy. Uh, interesting this year, besides a lot of uh, you know, uh, double amount of uh, winter precipitation, we also saw like a very delayed uh, season start, right? So we have like very late bar break. Uh, based on my number, we use Thompson Silas as a standard to report the bar break dates. So this year we saw like a bar break was like almost one week late compared to a historic average. So the average we're talking about March 15. So this year we noticed about the bar break is about March 22nd. So about one week, a little bit late compared to uh, uh, the historic average. Then the, the spring was super cold. I remember like when we have a bar break, it was super cold. So basically the shoes stay there this long for like two or three weeks. It's just not moving up, right? right. So we have a very late start and the, the early summer, early spring was super cool. So, you know, everybody was like, you know, talking about, oh, we're going to have a late season this year. And uh, the, the, you know, the bad thing is late season, but uh, you know, the good thing is that when we have very like late and cold springs, the mutual start very slow, right? So, you know, I think one thing, you know, we have very late season, very uh, cold springs. So the disease pressure was a little bit lower, particularly for the powdery mildew because the temperature was low. So for the powdery mildew to, to grow, the best temperature is about 70 to 85 Fahrenheit. I think most of the days when we have like, you know, April, May, that was below 70s. I remember the cup of uh, a week was pretty cool. So that was like a very slow season. So that's kind of, uh, you know, uh, got a lot of uh, growers off guard. People think that's going to be low disease season because temperature was very cool. Then I remember after Memorial Day, it's getting hot, right? Everything's going to explode it. So, you know, I think that's going to, you know, call the people off guard because the late season, disease pressure was low. Then after Memorial Day, the temperature was perfect. I remember like 70, 85 for like four or five weeks. That's perfect weather, but also very perfect weather for powder mildew. Okay. So that, I think that's, that's got, got a lot of people off guard because they were late to spray because disease pressure was off. Then everything exploded at, at a very short time. So, uh, you know, um, but one thing I think, you know, the, what we can learn, of course, this year is a very interesting season, but we, we can learn that I think the weather station or the powder mildew index from UC still working. I think I write an article with, uh, you know, Matthew, with, uh, with American Vineyard Magazines. We take, pull all the data from weather stations. You can see the weather station provide real-time values. So if you track the weather station, if you track the powder mildew index, you will notice after Memorial Day, the index has exploded higher. Okay, so if you watch index very closely, real-time, you will know that, well, time to spray. At a, you know, after Memorial Day, right? So every every ten days, every seven days, depends on the the weather station, depends on the data from the powder mildew index. You know, you know, you have to spray. So I think that's just pretty much reminded growers still use the powder mildew index, and we have a fantastic weather station here at Fresno. We have nice stations cover the whole area. So you know, I think one thing we can learn from this year, 
the powder mildew index does work. So yeah. maybe, you know, uh, maybe next year we don't know what's going to be the season, but, you know, use the data and uh, monitor closely to the, the index and the schedule the spray, you know, coordinate based on the index number. Yeah, so you said it caught some people off guard when those temperatures evolved uh, to what was ideal for growth of powdery mildew. If growers don't manage that, they could lose a considerable amount of their crop. Do you anticipate, uh, you know, based on what you're seeing, is it too late for some people, you know, as far as it affecting clusters? Because harvest is going to be a little late this year, we're anticipating, right? Yeah, in terms of mildew, right now it's too late. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, uh, one, one thing about the powder mildew is not just about powder mildew itself, right? You see the white powder on the clusters, but sometimes there's a secondary infections, especially when you have like a pretty severe powder mildew. Those barrier, barriers are very small and you have those kind of cracking there. So that might result in some uh, bunch rot later in the season. Once those bunch get sugared up, uh, so that's going to be another concern for the grower to look at. You know, right now it's too, too late to spray any fungicide for powder mildew. But you have to watch out those uh, uh, the bunches to prevent any uh, further bunch rot, right. especially when you have like a very severe powdery mildew. So watch those bunch closely. You know, change your water. You know, if you see a lot of you know like you know crackings or uh, leaking on the clusters, dial back the waters and then use some fungicide to stop those uh, further bunch rot on your on your vines, and they're gonna f uh, prevent the further you know yield loss at harvest. Great. Well, hey, thank you so much, George, for the insights. Uh, like you said, you can read more about it in uh, the current issue of American Vineyard Magazine. And uh, best of luck with Harvest. We hope everything works out all right. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.